Thank you, Graham, and um, thank you to the Sydney Mining Club for the opportunity to speak here tonight. Um, Xanadu, I tried to think back at the last time Xanadu spoke at the Sydney Mining Club, and I think it was um, 2017. But um, at that time, I sort of said, it's the time now to have your discoveries, um, because we know there's a wave of demand coming for copper. And copper's quite unique. It takes a little bit of time to find. It takes a lot of time to drill. It takes a lot of metres. Um, and it takes even longer to build these projects. So really today what I'm talking about is now the time. You need projects that are in development. Um, because, you know, some say the next 25 years we need to consume more copper than what we've ever mined ever. Now, all that copper's coming from very old, very deep mines in Chile. Argentina, Peru. So if our reliance on the transition to a carbon-free future is relying on the copper, we need to find more of it and we need to put more of it in development. So Xanadu, it's very much a Sydney-born bred company but spent its whole lifetime working in Mongolia. So what I'm going to talk about today is a story of a little bit of persistence, um, a little bit of luck and you need that in exploration. Um, but now a project that's positioned to probably one of the, the near-term developments in terms of large copper projects globally. Um, so it's an exciting project. Um, so hopefully I step through this. You'll see by the end of it, you know, what a copper project looks like um, and what it takes to get one of these projects going. So that's a photo there um, last month of our copper project. Um, a few nights ago when I was putting these slides together, I was looking and um, that camp used to be one or two girls and that's what Mongolians live in, yurts. Now it's a full development story. Um, so it's a very exciting project to be involved in. So disclaimer comments. So what does Xana do? We're about creating value for exploration. Um, what we do is we go to places where we can have tier one discoveries. We get on the ground, we secure tenure. Um, and we use our geologists to find those projects. So we generate them, we take them through the generation, we drill them, and we take them through to project definition. And that's what we're doing now with the Hamugtai project. So it's about the discovery process. So the value for shareholders for us is the front end of the Lausanne curve, which I'm sure you're all aware of. And then we get it to a stage, it's about a joint venture or about finding a partner to help build these projects. Many years raising money in Sydney, raising money in Australia, everyone always said to me, um, when you find this project, you can't build it. That's never the aim. The aim is to find these discoveries because the majors know you want them. It's these are the projects that all your majors want. Um, so it's about having that discovery and being able to get a deal across the line that lends adds value to your shareholders. When I look at our industry, the exploration industry is about a 35% internal rate of return business. If you can manage your exploration and you can have discoveries, you take that 35% rate of return. Once you get a project to a mining stage, which is an 8% rate of return, you recycle that business and you start again. And that's how you add value in this business. It's very simple. Um, so there's no sort of um, nothing technical here. It's about having genuine discoveries that people want to buy and majors need. So as I said, we're located in the South Gobi region. Our Hamugtai project you see there, our Red Mountain project. Hamugtai is very much the first end of our sort of strategies. We've had a big discovery there and we'll walk through that. Um, now that's a project funded through to final investment decision. Um, we're very keen, as I said, we're an exploration company. We build a portfolio of projects, so we maintain that portfolio and that cycle going through. So we continue to expand that project pipeline. And you see in the South Gobi there, so Hamugtai, a little bit north of Ayutogoy. Um, this is an area that has developed rapidly in the last 20 years. Um, so I think when you look at this project going from exploration, connecting power and doing these things, um, we're doing it rapidly. And this is why it's an interesting story. So here's a small company about a year ago struggling away. Um, and, you know, with the right project, limited funding, um, we were able to bring in one of the world's largest mining companies in Zijin Mining. For those of you who are not aware, Zijin Mining is China's biggest gold producer. As a byproduct, they produce more copper than most copper companies. 
Um, they're in joint venture with Robert Friedland in the Congo, probably the world's biggest tier one development in the Kamoa deposit. Um, and this is a company that's growing rapidly. So we were able to do a deal with them. Um, and then over the last six to eight months, we've seen a nice re-rating in the share price, getting back to a level where we should be. But what that's done is not only put money into the top co as Xanadu, but it's given us $35 million to fund a PFS. We're managing that project, we're driving it forward, um, and we control all the decision making. And what it's about is getting to a decision, a final investment decision in September next year. So you can see when you look at this re-rate, it's a little bit about funding. Um, you have a big project, but it's the ability to take it through the next stages and show the true value of it. We've had some fantastic shareholders. 62% you know, of our registers managed by or controlled by the top 20 shareholders. Um, we have a strong Sydney institutional, strong Sydney Melbourne institutional register. Um, and uh, the board and management have about 9.2% of that. So we think about Xanadu, it's all about strategy. Um, here's a small company, big, big discovery. Um, we're driving that through, through the PFS. That's really our horizon one discovery process. So we're ticking that box. We know we can add value to this project through exploration. Um, and at the moment, we're ticking away with five or six drill rigs on site, drilling deep holes, drilling shallow holes, doing resource infill. So we know there will be more discoveries. The one thing that you can count on when you're in a copper district is more discoveries. These things occur in camps and there's multiple discoveries to had. The race is now on for Xanadu to have those discoveries before we get to September next year when there's a decision, the final investment decision. Because every one of those discoveries has value. We're also positioning the company um, for the future. So as I said, part of our business, have discoveries, move them through to PFS, and then get an investment through for a major company um, and move on. So in the background, we have an Horizon Free strategy. It's about finding other projects. And in Western Mongolia, we're looking for nickel, um, we're looking for high-grade copper, and we're looking for other majorities. And we're leaning on our vast experience in Mongolia to find those assets. Um, very much a first mover in a way. Um, we don't see any opposition, um, so it's a nice place to be competing for these types of assets. A little bit about Mongolia. Why we're in Mongolia is because we're looking for projects that all your major companies want to buy. And when you talk about copper, your BHPs, your rear Tintos, all want porphyry copper deposits. So you've got to go where you have a chance of finding them. So we came to the South Gobi on the back of the OU Torgoy discovery. Um, and that allowed a small exploration company to explore on the ground. This is an area that gets cold in winter, but in summer you can operate a field program, a few land cruisers and swags. No fences, no people. Um, it's really God's gift to explorers. So that gave us the opportunity to get on and run a very cheap exploration program. Um, the scale of deposits, we're looking for big ones. We're on the doorstep of the world's biggest consumer of copper in China. Um, that was very important to us. And we're into a country where it has a culture of mining. Um, at the moment, 21% of the GDP of the country comes from mining. Um, and over 85% of the exports is mining. So this is a country that needs mining. And people often say to me, what the, the risk of mining in Mongolia? It's like, well, when I come to Australia, I think the risk of it is closer to the people that don't need mining. Mongolia needs it. So this is a country that requires mining um, and it won't stop. Um, and despite you know, what people think, this has been a stable democracy for 30 years. It's sandwiched between Russia and China, but it's a very stable democracy. So um, you know, this was a perfect place to explore. We're very strong on the ground in our sustainability. I and mean, this is, you know, everyone talks about their social license to operate now. Um, but if you don't have this, then you've got an issue. Um, wherever you are in mining, whether you're in New South Wales, whether you're in Saudi Arabia, wherever you're in the Philippines, wherever you're in Mongolia, this has to be done properly. Um, and any, any serious junior explorer will be doing this properly. So um, I think last year we put out our first sustainability report. I'm very proud of that. We have a, you know, the community we live in, we're part of that. Um, and it's very much a part of who we are and who we work in. A little bit about the project, Hamagtai. Um, it's a large resource. We've been able to put together over 1.1 billion tonnes of mineralisation, over 3 million tonnes of copper, 8 million ounces of gold. Importantly, this has a high-grade core. We have about 100 million tonnes over 0.8% copper equivalent. 
very important in these projects. When you look at copper projects, the ones with the high grade components, the ones with gold are the ones that work. Um, these are the projects your gold companies want. Um, these are the companies your copper companies want. To have a project with scale and good byproduct credits is very important. It's a quality project. Um, we've completed a P study on it. We've got an MPV, a little over 600 million, four year payback, IRR at 20%. 30 year mine life. It's a big project, it's a great project and a fantastic project for Mongolia. And we look at those numbers now and some of the drilling and what I'll step through now. We're hoping those numbers will improve um, and it's gonna be exciting. But the PFS is funded, so we're doing that. There's no dilution to our shareholders. Um, we don't need to raise money. Um, we're focused on that PFS and Zijin are paying for that. We're managing it. We've been put together a world-class team um, and it'll be a, a very good study. So a little bit where we are, I won't spend too much time on this, but where we sit here in 2023 today, the aim is to complete this PFS by September next year. We'll enter early works at a final investment decision. Um, and then construction, 2026, what we're looking for is sulphide production in 27. So, um, you know, we're running hard, we're busy on the ground, very proud that we have a national team running this. Um, we have good oversight from some of the world's best scientists, some of the world's best engineers, um, and it's a truly a, a remarkable program that's happening at the moment. So a little bit about the drilling. Uh, since about March, April this year, we've completed 153 infill holes, 48,000 metres of drilling. Um, we've seen some incredibly positive results at our major deposits, Stockwork Hill, White Hill, Copper Hill. For a feel for scale, um, you see the white lines there around the resources. That's an open pit that'll be two kilometres by two and a half kilometres. So this is a big project and remains open in all directions and at depth. Um, and based on that drilling, we'll be putting out an updated mineral resource that'll be out in October this year. So our team's working busily on that. A little bit about that resource drilling. We're very focused on, you know, increasing the high grade. Whenever you have these large copper deposits, if you can get more of that high grade into the earlier parts of the mining, it brings back that payback period rapidly um, and really affects the, the economics. I put here a section on Stockwork Hill, and this is part of some of the infill drilling we're doing. And if you look in the background at the purple, the red, the yellow, the green, that's the resource block model in the background. But I'll draw your attention to those same colours on the drill holes. Um, and if we look at those drill holes, we see broad zones, 29 metres or 1%. In our old resource, that was nothing. So now suddenly you've got a block of 1% copper there within 100 metres of surface. Um, likewise, at depth, it's extending. And so we're continuing to see these high grade zones improve this resource. Um, and a lot of people say to me, you know, you're dealing with a big copper deposit here. How could you miss it? But, you know, these high grade zones in these systems can be just like a gold system in Western Australia. They can be, you know, a few hundred metres wide and long. Um, and they could be hiding in there. And we've found a lot of these little gems in this resource drilling. So we're very excited about this resource that'll come out in October this year. Um, overall, we've seen exceptional drilling. We've seen results better than, um, if not equal then to the resource. Then if we step over to our other large deposit, White Hill, we've found a new high grade part to it. This is very significant because White Hill is very much the engine room of this system, very large, low grade system. But in the past, it's lacked grade. Um, sure it works when you can mine other parts of the system in high grade, you know, this is a big bulk system, it works. But now drilling's found a deep high grade part of this. And I think if any takeaway from this is if you look at that pit shape there, that's based on the optimization of the previous resource. Now we have a huge blob sitting just outside it at the bottom of it um, with some fantastic grades. And this should work, this is the way it should be because all our other deposits, they all have high grade cores. Now we have a high grade core to our biggest system. So um, very exciting. First time we've observed broad intervals of 1% copper, high grade, gold. Um, yeah, it's all coming together very smoothly. So we had just completed that drilling. Um, we've had five rigs running on that since April. Now those five rigs have gone on to shallow exploration and deep exploration in the district. Um, and if you look at the Stockwork Hill, you look at the White Hill, you look at the Copper Hill, so only about 10% of this large mining licence. 
So now we're stepping out and drilling other targets. We're seeing some fantastic results. You see to the north of Stockwork Hill there, eight metres at over, you know, close to two grams gold. Um, at cluster three, 15 metres at over percent copper from 100 metres. Um, so we're in that district. We're in the ballpark. There will be more discoveries here. I mean, excitingly, as Graeme hinted, we're drilling some deeper holes now. And that's something this project's really lacked. Most of the drilling now only goes down to five or 600 metres. But in all those drill holes, it gets stronger, gets better, the mineralisation as we drill deeper. So we're continuing to use our good geology to vector into deeper mineralisation um, and really looking for what we call our Hugo Dummett. So most of you are aware, our oh, Utorgo deposit, um, we have that there on the left-hand side. Um, the open pit has been in production since 2013. Um, it's a 400 metre deep pit now. The Hugo Dummett, I think, is now scheduled to be the world's biggest underground mine that's in full production now. Um, so if you look at the geology, you look at the, the same size, very similar relationships. We're ticking the same boxes, but we don't have the deep drilling. And that's what we're focused on now, because what we believe is we're only seeing the tops of the system in that billion tonne resource. Um, and it's going to be exciting drilling as we continue to search for that deeper core of the system and gets better. Um, so it changes. Um, I'm an exploration geologist, so sometimes it's hard to see people wearing high vis on camp. Um, but that's all changing. The beauty of Mongolia infrastructure, we connected a 30 kVA power line the other week. I think we decided to do it in April, and I think it was connected two months later. Um, you know, that's the beauty of operating in a place with good infrastructure. Um, we're producing a new core logging facility, accommodations going in, greenhouses, water filtration. Um, it's all happening, it's busy. It's gone from a, a sleepy exploration site to 150 people working around the clock, um, and it's all go. Um, so what we're going to look at here is really the journey. And as I said, we picked up this project 2014, 2015. Um, we bought the project from a subsidiary of Rio Tinto called Turquoise Hill, um, and we paid $13 million for this project. We got on the ground. We had, saw about $70 million of exploration that had been previously com um, committed from Ivanhoe Mines. We had that data. We had a fantastic camp, and we set about our job. We knew it would get better. Um, we set about that journey on making it bigger. So we put together a small resource in 2015 on the back of the purchase. 2018, um, again, that resource continued to grow. But I think the real step change um, we saw in that, and we saw an independent valuation, about 174. It's about adding value as you go along. The real step change was the resource we put out in 2021. That the 3 million tonnes contained copper, 8 million ounces of gold. That was a real step change for this project. We had some real changes in terms of geology, understanding the ore system, and then it just grew. The grades grew, um, the system grew, um, and it was exciting. So, you know, when I look at this chart now and I look at the MPV of the project, we have completed the, the scoping study at 630. Um, where we sit at the moment, now we're funded through the PFS with the gin mining. Um, it's about adding the value. And people say, geez, it's been a long task. But I look now globally and I look at some of the projects around the world at the moment, they don't move too fast. And I think Tech two years ago put out a study on copper deposits. And taking a copper project from 2014 to where we have in 21, the average is around 15 to 20 years. So everyone said you can't do things in Mongolia. It's a very difficult place to work. It's too cold. Um, government's not nice, all these things. But we've taken a project from a very small copper project to a very large one in what I believe is a record time. And I said, the infrastructure's in place now. I think you'll see that next phase of development happen in rapid time too. So we might be that, um, might be that sort of horse that's going under the radar a little bit, but we are very focused on our job and we're getting the job done. I will say in the background, we are an exploration company. We have a portfolio of other exploration projects. Some of these projects suffer because you have a, a bigger project and all your money goes to that. Um, but we have our Red Mountain. Again, this is a district scale project, over 40, 50 square, square kilometres of porphyry mineralisation. Fantastic geochemistry. You know, we've drilled holes here, 200 metres, 1% copper from surface. Um, we've got outcropping epithermal systems. We'll start going back, we'll start to do a, bit, a little bit more exploration in this project. Um, but this is really the value that Xanadu has in itself. It's a project that's there. 
um, and it's a project that we can move on to once we um, get Hamugtai through to the construction phase. And I think broadly, it's about the opportunities and about the belts. Um, here we have a map that shows uh, Kazakhstan, it shows Western China and Xinjiang, and it shows Mongolia. And these are the belts we're dealing with. And these belts are some of the world's biggest endowed belts. Here I've got the copper deposits only. There I put the gold deposits on there and I put projects like Mirantau and Kumtor on there. The, you know, the 50, 60 million ounce gold deposits that are in Uzbekistan, that are in Kazakhstan. I think the beauty is a lot of these belts all come into Mongolia. And if you look at Kazakhstan there, there's a lot of those black dots. And these are the, these are the big deposits too. And then you look, they all stop at Mongolia. And then they come again when you go through to eastern China. It's not an artefact of geology, it's just an artefact of exploration. So Xanadu is moving a lot of its exploration now to the western parts of Mongolia, um, where we have the opportunity for nickel sulphides, where we have the opportunity for more copper. Um, and we believe with the reputation we've built in country, um, the team we've been able to put together, um, we have the ability to move quickly and secure some of these great opportunities. Um, and an important part of the world too. Um, a lot of interest, I think, you know, when I look at Kazakhstan now, a lot of Western money going in there. Mongolia, I'm sure that'll happen again. Um, you know, when we when on the back of Ayu Torgoy, having a strategic position in Mongolia was almost a necessity for every major mining company. Um, and you'll say what changed is probably some of the government policy change, but the geology didn't change. So, you know, these countries take a little bit of time, um, but, you know, having that advantage, knowing where to go, is a critical advantage for us. So, as I said, it's all about the development stories. The AXX is, you know, really challenged for copper stories. Um, and you look at the AXX stories here on this map, we've also added some TXX stories, but you're left with Hot Chile, Caraval and Hillside. And we're entering a period where we know copper demand's going to be strong. Um, we know there's a lack of discoveries. So the opportunities in Australia, the, the groups that have done the hard work, the Xanadus, the Hot Chilis, the Caravels and Rexes, there's very few of them. And I think when you look at those peer comparisons, um, this is an interesting graph and this is always evolving. For those who don't know, Philo de Sol's a remarkable discovery in the high Andes between Chile and Argentina. Um, so you could almost take that one out. That's a once in a generational discovery. Um, but you look at the, the factors here, you know, what we are dealing with is Xanadu, very low strip ratio, very below average. Um, EV price, we're cheap. Um, and a lot of the other factors, but the key thing I look at here is the funded through to the PFS. We're one of the few groups here that are actually funded through that. So um, it's a unique opportunity to be in. Um, and certainly that value is starting to be embedded in our stock, but has a bit to go. So as I said, um, we're all about discovering world-class ore deposits. Um, we understand the strategy. We don't believe we're a mining company. We believe we're an exploration company that can provide those assets for the future that we all need. Um, we very much de-risk these projects through smart exploration. Um, you need a very good geology team to tell you when to pick up a project, when to stop drilling, um, and when to continue. Um, and we believe we have that. Um, we have the ability to form deals with larger mining companies. We've done that with Zijin Mining. Um, we live in Mongolia, very much our ESG is our everyday. Um, this is a community um, many of our people come from, um, so we're very focused on keeping it like that. Um, but so we're a growth company too, so not only do we have a large discovery which is going through those study phases and will be um, one of the next developments globally, um, but we're continuing to grow that portfolio with smart geology, um, broadening those asset classes we're looking for in terms of commodities um, and, you know, looking at some of those commodities that, you know, we need for future facing minerals like nickel, um, copper, and we're looking at a few of those things in Mongolia. So um, very much the, the Xanadu story. So thank you.